a model steamboat named Edith, part 27, fitting the rudder and the radio compartment cover. The shaft of the rudder has a bit of a bend in it, because I think when the boat was originally built, it didn't line up with the bottom part. And the only thing that holds this rudder into the extended part of the keel is gravity, and that's no good at all, so by fitting a small piece of silicone rubber like this, cut to the right size so it matches the contour of the hull, this should put some positive pressure on the rudder and hold it permanently in position. Once this piece of silicone rubber tubing is slid onto the rudder tube, you can see in this clip that it's going to hold the rudder firmly into the bottom part. I applied some oil to the main rudder shaft as it went into the tube, and as you can see, the rudder moves very freely. This was the simplest method I could come up with. I could have used a stainless steel spring, but this will be fine. And that's another job completed. Almost ready for connecting to the servo. I think I've got the piece of silicone rubber tubing cut to just the right length, and it takes very little effort to move the rudder. As this rebuild nears completion, I can't really show you what I'm doing inside the boat, because even though this is quite a large model, the openings on top of the deck are quite small. And once my hand is in the way, you can't see much at all. I'll move it out of the way. In the previous shot showing the rotation of the propeller, the engine was in the boat, just sat in there, not bolted down, and as you've just seen, I was drilling and tapping the holes, and very shortly I will be bolting the engine into the boat, but not just yet. There are some damaged and some missing parts to replace, and I've cut a piece of mahogany to the right length, and I've just clamped it in place so you can see what I'm doing. This part was soldered to the deck, so now what I need to do is alter it slightly. Early on in this series, I removed this part from the deck and cut a hole in the deck. This allows access to the rudder servo, and it also allows me to connect a push rod from the rudder servo to the tiller arm that operates the rudder. The paintwork on this boat is somewhat less than stunning, but the owner of the boat and myself decided that it wasn't a good idea to repaint it, because the way it looks captures the essence of an old fishing boat, but there are certain areas that do need attention. When this part sits on the deck at the stern, it's quite visible, and it's also very rusty inside, so I'm using a small drum sander fitted to my Minicraft drill to clean it up. This is where the part fits on the deck, and I'm going to modify this so I can have a push rod from the servo just inside it coming out to operate the tiller arm. So I need to remove the metal from one side of this part. I cut down each side very carefully with the bandsaw, and here I'm using my small barco spanner to lever the metal back and forth until the solder joint breaks. And now it looks like this. It still needs some more cleaning up though, so it's back to the drum sander for a festival of rust removal. And I think it's time for a health and safety warning. As you can clearly see, there's quite a lot of dust floating about. This is rust and old debris from inside the unit. And you don't want to breathe this stuff in, so wearing a dust mask is quite a good idea. The next job is a small and accurate soldering job. I'm going to fit a pair of hinges to this deck fitting, so I can swing it up out of the way to gain access to the rudder servo. And I'm using this very small butane blowtorch that was kindly sent to me by a viewer. Thank you for that. I'm using some Fryo Lux paint. I get this from Blackgate's Engineering, and it's actually finely powdered solder, ready mixed in the pot with some flux. And all you have to do is coat the parts that you're going to solder in this mixture. And as you can see, I'm soldering on a pair of hinges. I positioned the hinges accurately on the part, and when the soldering process was completed, they looked like this. Once everything had cooled, I used the completed assembly to mark out the positions to drill some holes in the deck, because I'm going to bolt these hinges down using some 10BA nuts and bolts. I held the part securely on the deck and drilled through the holes, and then I went all the way through the holes with a drill that is clearing size for 10BA. In this clip you can clearly see what's going to happen. The whole thing is going to be bolted down to the deck and I can just lift it up to get at the rudder servo. But it's painting time first. I cleaned up the part and I'm going to paint it initially with HMG Paints 1K etch primer. And once again when using etch primer don't go mad, do not overcoat. You need to be able to see the metal through it. That way the etching seems to be a lot better. And also don't forget allow at least 24 hours for the etch primer to do its work before overcoating. This is a new pack of JB Weld that's been in the workshop for a while and I'm going to use this to repair the damaged woodwork on the boat. Normal procedure, two equal lengths and mix it thoroughly. 
In this clip I'm applying some JB Weld to both sides, both the wooden part and the metal part. And once I clamp them together, in 24 hours time when the JB Weld is set, it will be a very firm, secure joint. Both sides needed some JB Weld and I'm using spring clamps to hold the parts in place until the JB Weld cures. I need to figure out the best way to get the steam out of the boat if the safety valve is blowing off. The micrometer tells me that the safety valve is half an inch in diameter, so I'm going to make a brass fitting that goes over the safety valve and allows me to take the steam away from the safety valve and up the chimney. This is a very routine and very simple plain turning job. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll see a lot of this. So I'm not going to labour the point, I've speeded the video up and here I am removing metal at an alarming rate. I'm doing this completely freehand, just having a bit of fun. The only accurate dimension is the half inch hole that's going down the centre that fits over the safety valve. And how's this for multitasking? Whilst turning the part, I'm using a centre drill to make a centre hole in the work at this end. So I think that's not too bad for the diameter that I need. I need it to be heavy so that it doesn't blow off when the safety valve blows off. The next part of the operation is to drill a hole in the piece of brass, which is one inch long, using a half inch diameter drill. And here's a top tip. When doing a job like this, you have a couple of options. You can use the graduations on the hand wheel or on the quill of the tailstock. But if you don't want to stare blankly at the quill on the tailstock, watching the graduations, you can measure the twist drill and put a felt tip pen mark on the drill. And stop drilling the hole when the felt tip pen mark gets level with the work. Quite simple, very non-scientific. It was quite difficult pushing the half inch diameter twist drill through the metal. So I changed the half inch drill bit for a quarter inch drill bit and went all the way through with that first. Because not only does it act as a pilot for the half inch drill, I do need a quarter of an inch diameter hole all the way through the work. In this clip you can see why. I've turned the component round in the chuck and I'm machining the outside part now down to a diameter that will take a large bore flexible pipe. I've repositioned the cutting tool so I can cut a sequence of grooves around this area of the component just to grip the flexible pipe. Well that's the plan anyway. Here you see it fitted to the boiler. Using a flexible pipe is one option, particularly if the steam outlet connects to something on the superstructure, but on this boat it doesn't. The dummy steam pipe on the superstructure is far too thin to evacuate the boiler's safety valve. So when this safety valve blows off, the exhaust will go up the chimney. More about that later. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.